For this module, we will explore the MATLAB environment and play with some built-in interactive functions. The learning objectives for this module are as follows. Students will understand the benefits of using MATLAB over Excel, become familiar with the MATLAB layout, will know how to use built-in interactive functions to import data, save data, do basic plotting, and edit plots. Students will also learn about the structure of the MATLAB documentation and how to search for help. Before jumping into MATLAB, let's briefly revisit some of the advantages of using MATLAB over Excel. First of all, Excel is not very versatile and requires user input for most steps. Excel cannot manipulate large amounts of data quickly or easily. So for example, doing similar operations across columns or rows of data matrices often takes much longer in Excel than it would be in MATLAB. Also, it's difficult to recreate graphs or different operations without going through the individual steps again. Excel can only handle data stored as large matrices. It cannot handle compact data representations. Lastly, Excel cannot perform advanced signal processing or computational models. So what can MATLAB do? MATLAB is essentially a large calculator. It can do any basic math computations, including computing descriptive statistics, averaging, doing calculus, and applying any matrix algebra. MATLAB can also create and play sounds, images, and videos for stimulus presentation. It can acquire and record user input. MATLAB can also use input data from many different platforms. It can batch and script and automate all data analysis streams. So this is a major bonus of using MATLAB. MATLAB also has excellent publication quality graphics for 2D and 3D figures. And for those analyzing EEG or fMRI, MATLAB also has the capability to do time and frequency domain signal processing. And lastly, MATLAB can also do computational modeling and simulations. There are a variety of different MathWorks-based toolbox that are already embedded within this trial. For example, you have access to the statistics, signal processing, curve fitting, and bioinformatics toolboxes. Moreover, many data analytic toolboxes have been created as add-ons to the MATLAB base package. So you can download a variety of different external toolboxes, such as Psych Toolbox for stimulus presentation or data acquisition, or EEG Lab or SPM for the analysis of EEG data or fMRI data. This is the MATLAB layout. Here you'll find the current directory. By setting the current directory, you'll be able to designate where items will be saved and indexed. This automatically has put me into the MATLAB folder in my documents. But you can also select other folders where you can save data and easily manipulate data. So what I've done is I've changed the current directory to the location of the data files for this class. You'll see that the current folder lists all the subfolders and files within the current directory. This is the command window. Here you can type and execute commands immediately. You can also write scripts, which will allow you to execute commands when you're ready to use them. All interactive functions will echo codes to the command window. Each command that's run will be listed in the command history. If your code has an error, it will be identified by a red warning sign in the command history. Commands can be copied either from the command window or from the command history and into a script for later use. Any data that has been imported into the workspace or created during the process of your data analysis will be found in the workspace. This lists all the variables and their sizes. At the top bar, you'll find three different tabs. The home tab is where you'll find most common interactive functions like open a new script, import data, clear your workspace, clear commands, and set paths for new toolboxes. In the plots tool, you'll find an interactive tab for graphing. The options will change when you select different data types to graph. In the applications tab, you will find any additional user interfaces for the toolboxes and applications of interest. Here we see the signal analysis toolbox, the filter design analysis toolbox, and the window design analysis for spectral processing. So the first thing you might want to do is add a new toolbox. So we're going to go to the home folder and to set path. By adding a new toolbox in this way, we can directly call the user interface and we can also directly call functions from the toolbox in an automatic way. So here I'm going to add with subfolders 
Now I'm going to look for the newest version of EEG Lab, which I just downloaded. So I'm going to select the folder of interest, click open, and I'm going to save this new path. So now we see that the folder with all the EEG Lab functions has been added, and I will save this path. I can now call EEG Lab directly from the command window. As you can see, the EEG Lab graphical user interface has popped up, as well as additional variables that are now stored in the workspace. EEG Lab has already created a basic structure for all data so that when you import your data, it will fill in each of these variables. For now, I'm going to close EEG Lab and clear out my screen. Clear All deletes all the variables in the workspace. CLC will clear my command window. So now everything looks clean. And now the command history has a list of all the different commands that I've typed in. Now let's import data interactively. We go to import data. What I'd like to do is import the data file called EEG data underscore 500 milliseconds. What this user interface has allowed us to do is to import 75 electrodes worth of EEG data. Each of the columns here designate a different electrode, and each of the rows indicate a different sample point. MATLAB has automatically assumed that this is a tab-separated text file. You can import data in a variety of different ways and save it into the workspace Right now, it's selected to save each column as a separate variable in our workspace. This is less than ideal because it's harder to do data manipulations when you have many different variables in your workspace. The most comparable type of data format to Excel is the table. This option allows you to have mixed data, for example, strings of words, categorical, ordinal, or nominal data, and numeric data. If you import data as a numeric matrix like this. Any text data that's in your data matrix will be converted into not a number or NAN and this isn't what we want. So right now what I'll do is I'll import the data as a table and when you go under import selection you have a couple different options. You can import data directly, you can generate a script that will do this, or you can generate an interactive function that will import data of a similar type in a similar way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a script. And so what you can see here is that it's selecting the data file. It's labeling the type of information that's incorporated. So these are all um, numbers in double format and importing those data. Here, it's saying that my output variable is going to be EEG data 500 milliseconds as a table. So I'm going to go ahead and import this data. I'm going to close the graphical user interface. And we see that in the workspace, our data is called EEG data 500 milliseconds. I'm going to go ahead and just change the name of this real quick to just data. When you click on a variable in your workspace, it will open up a variable editor. In the variable editor, you'll see the exact format of the table that was provided as a snapshot when you imported your data to begin with. If I highlight a single column of data and look to plot that, a variety of different plots will automatically show up. In addition, if I hold the cursor over the plot type, it'll give me a description of exactly what the plot's going to do. Here, if I wanted to select two rows of data, my options will automatically update given the additional data types. So now I can plot this for one column with respect to another column, or I can plot them as separate data series. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. What you'll see at the command window is that it created a plot, and you can also see that that command was run in the command history. MATLAB allows you to automatically manipulate each of your figures interactively as well. If I click on this arrow, I can edit the plot however I see fit. If I click on the series, 
If I click on the series, it'll open up a property editor that I can now make adjustments to each of these things. So I can change the display name if I'd like to. I can also change the line size, and I can do the same thing for the other line. So let's change the display name, line size, maybe the color, and the line type. You can also change the size of the axes and the font types. So I'm going to change this to 18, and let's change this to Arial. And if you go under more properties, you can also change other aspects of the axes. A separate window will open, and what I'd like to do is just change the thickness of my lines. So you'll notice the outside border where the axes have now changed thickness. Lastly, I might want to add a legend. The icon at the top automatically creates a legend but you might want to get rid of certain aspects of that legend. You can change the orientation. In this case, I just want to get rid of the box. You can also change the background color and a variety of other different things. What's nice about MATLAB is that now that I have a figure that I'm good to use, um, I can now create an M file or a script that has already made all, all of the modifications that I'd like to in the interactive window. So you go to generate code, now, there's an automatically generated MATLAB code that has all of the details that have changed using the figure editor. MATLAB also has some built-in functions that provide some summary statistics when you're using a table. This is a really nice feature because then you don't have to type in particular commands to get this information. The format of this code is just a type summary and the name of the data table. In this case, it's just data. And what will happen is it'll plot to the screen the following the label and the size of that column, the minimum, median, and maximum for that column. This can sometimes be a good way of just spotting outliers really quickly if you have a relatively small data set. Instead of typing commands to the screen and executing them immediately, you can also copy any of the commands that you've used um, from your command history or from your command window into a script. I've already created a sample script that has done some of the things that we're interested in. Here's an example of a sample script. There are a couple different things to make note of. First, anytime you see two percent signs, this indicates a cell. It allows you to subset your script into different sections and run each section separately rather than running everything all together. So for example, if you had um, imported data, it won't import your data every single time. There are a couple other commands that we've used um, interactively that um, you can also type out, and as I mentioned, you can also copy different aspects of the plotting commands from the command history and save them directly to your script. Alternatively, you can use a generated script that was created by MATLAB. There are a few benefits to writing codes as scripts rather than writing it directly to the command window. First of all, you can save your scripts. You can also write codes and not run them immediately. This is really good when you're just creating codes from scratch or debugging codes from other people. You can also modify scripts and make them more generalizable. This becomes really helpful in automating your data processing stream. Importantly, you can also create comments in your codes to help you decipher what each line does. This is particularly helpful when you're sharing codes. So for example, I can write a comment using a single percent sign and say this code changes the dot 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 current directory to the MATLAB folder. Each line of code when you're first starting to program is good to comment to give you an idea. If you make an error in your syntax, for example, MATLAB will highlight this error on the right panel. 
it'll state explicitly that on line 13, you have an invalid syntax and you're possibly missing a parentheses or an end bracket. So MATLAB allows you to check your codes before you actually run them. Okay. So we have a variable in our workspace and we might want to save it and you can do this a couple different ways. Under the home window, you can click save workspace. What this will do is it'll save every variable in your workspace, in this case we only have one variable, to a .mat file. And this .mat file is a format for MATLAB variables. So we can save this as um, module one data and hit save. If you don't want to save everything in your workspace, you might want to look into the save command and find other ways of saving your code. You can go into the save command two different ways. You can type save in the documentation at the top and it'll bring up all the different functions that you might be interested in using. Here we want to use save variables um, in the workspace to a file. Another way you can do this is if you know the name of the command and you just want help on it, you can write doc save and it'll bring up the documentation file for the save command as well. This is a basic layout for MATLAB's um, documentation for a particular command. Here it'll provide the syntax or how the command should be written in order to execute the command, as well as description of each of the different components of that syntax. There are also a bunch of different examples that MATLAB provides with comments as to how everything's written. If we want to save specific variables to a mat file, we can click here and it gives an example of two variables that are in the workspace. And what it's doing is it's saving a file called pq file and it's saving variable p and q. Similarly, you could have omitted q and just had save p file.mat and indicated that you only wanted the p variable. The examples are incredibly helpful because you can just run them directly and see exactly how MATLAB is running each of those different commands. In my script, I've demonstrated a couple different ways that you could save the data using the save command. Okay, to recap, in this module you learned the benefits of using MATLAB over Excel, the layout of MATLAB, how to use several different built-in interactive functions to import data, save data, do some basic plotting, and edit plots. We also reviewed the MATLAB documentation to better understand the structure and syntax for the save command. Please complete the practice problems to test your knowledge of the material from this module. In the next module, we will discuss matrices and data manipulations.